Hey guys, welcome back to Horsepower Obsessed. I had a couple questions come up in the comments section about the display I use in my C7 Corvette and how I got it set, you know, to show on the display and uh, some other questions about some of the settings in the navigation system as well as the digital dash. So I'm going to go over some of the, the more quote unquote hidden settings in this system here and kind of show you exactly how to change all the uh, speedometer settings and everything so you can set it all up the way you want it. Okay, so to start with, uh, the first thing I've noticed a lot of people don't seem to know about is that if you press and hold this power button, or the start button, press and hold it down. I believe it's for 10 seconds. As you can see, everything kind of comes alive in the car. And that is basically, uh, that is basically like an auxiliary power mode so you can have all the electronics on in the car without it running. To navigate through any of the options in the, uh, the actual dash here, you want to go with the directional pad and the select button right here on the steering wheel. So basically, I will hit the left button on the steering wheel to go to the left, and it's going to bring up all these options here. So... We'll start on the first one here, this info button. When you hit this, it's literally going to give you just your info. So you'll just scroll down through it. It's going to give you like your trip information and fuel range, your oil percent, which yes, mine's low. I plan on changing it here shortly. Uh, your tire pressure, uh, your fuel mileage or your gas mileage and all, you know, all that kind of stuff. So that's just going to literally be the information for your, your car specifically. So if you want to start getting into the the settings to customize things. You want to actually go all the way down here to the settings option. And once we're in the settings option, this is going to allow us to really kind of dig deeper into the everything in here. And if you, as you can see right here, that one is called the display theme. So right now I have mine set on tour, which is the, um, the screen you're looking at now. But if I hit to the right, it will allow me to change it. So I can change it to track, sport, tour, or link it to the drive mode, which is done via the selector here. So if you don't want that to all be linked, you just set it to whatever you want. I prefer the tour setup because it actually gives you a good bit of information, but the track one's not bad either. And if I select that, that's what my dash would now look like. Now, again, I would just go into settings and I can change it to, again to, uh, we'll try sport here. That's what it would look like if I had sport set. Now, like I said before, you can actually go in here and change all of these to link to the actual drive mode. Whereas right now I'm in sport. So that's the sport theme that it shows. But if I changed it to tour, the entire thing changes to tour. Or if I go back to sport, it changes to sport, go to track, it changes to track. So I like my car usually in sport with the the dash actually set up to the tour because of some of the information it shows me. Um, when I go back into tour here, you can see once I get back up to the performance options, over there on the right, I get all the engine temp, oil temp, oil pressure, battery, and my tire pressure, whether or not it's okay or low. So I prefer this display over any of the rest of them. Um, again, obviously going to be totally uh, your preference, but I'm just showing you how to separate all this stuff if you want to go through and really, you know, have your car sit in sport, but have that sit on track or your heads up display set on something else. And those are, again, those are separate as well. You can adjust those separately. They do not have to be linked. Okay, and I'm not real sure how well you can see the heads-up display there, but um, the heads-up display is just changed right down here. You can actually just uh, cycle through with the info button which heads-up display you want. So, as you can see, my dash is still set on tour. This heads-up display up there is set on sport. So, I'll just hit the info button until I get to track. I prefer the track setup for the heads-up display because it actually gives you a shift light. And uh, it obviously allows you to see the RPM a little bit better. So, this is kind of what I'm saying with getting all this customized is that, you know, I like my car in sport. I like the 
the the the uh, in dash display on tour, and then I like my heads up display on track. So it's like literally, I can pick and choose all these pieces here to really make it work best for me. Now, as far as the settings go for the actual in dash, um, the biggest setting in here I particularly change is the uh, driving mode. So in here, my engine sound management, this is what's going to open and close the baffles again in the exhaust. Uh, again, this is you're going to have your auto mode, which is going to be linked to the actual, again, the driving mode selector right there. Uh, but I like mine again in track because I like it to be as loud as possible. So you can see I have a check mark right there. You can go through sport, tour, stealth. Obviously, stealth's the quietest. Um, so you can kind of change these on a fly if you're pulling in and it's real late at night. You don't want to wake your neighbors or whatever it might be. You can select stealth there rather than messing with the, the dial here and changing all your settings. So I have mine set on track. Another one that's interesting is steering. It allows you to select how you like the steering. And based on my experience, I like it in sport. It kind of tightens it up a little bit, but track is a little too tight, I think. So tour is a little too, a little too loose and then sport tightens it up perfectly for me. So I leave that in sport. But uh, those these are the kind of more quote unquote hidden options. And like I said, this is really just a preference, my preference as to how I like the car. But the fact that these settings aren't clearly available um, kind of makes it seem like I should have put together a video for this. Because I've had this question come up in my comments a lot. And it is just because it's not really clear. It's not right on the surface of the settings. You kind of have to dig for these. Now, a little bonus here. Um, I've had this question only once, but I figured I'd throw it in here with this video as well, is the valet mode. When you go into settings, you can then select valet mode. You can actually put in your pin number here. And basically, this is a pin number that only you know. And when you put this in, it puts the car into valet mode. And what that does is it actually locks the glove box because this is a this glove box is an electronically actuated um, lock on it. So when you push that button, it won't open if you have a valet. Uh, your rear hatch will not open either. And if you have it set up this way, your PDR will start recording as well, which is really cool because if the valet gets in and decides he wants to go for a joyride, your PDR will record everything he's doing. Speed, uh, how, how hard he's pushing the accelerator, the brake, all that stuff will be recorded. So if he does something like that, you'd literally have quite the case on your hands. So literally all it is is just a pin number. It will lock your glove box. It will lock the rear hatch and it will start the PDR if you have it set that way. Okay, and to set up the PDR to record with the valet, you would just go into the PDR, go to settings, go to valet mode and make sure it's set to automatically record in valet. I also have it set to automatically overwrite the data if the card's full. I put a 32 gigabyte SD card in there, which is probably more than enough, but you never know. Just in case I ever forgot to delete something on there, I have those both set. That way, if I set valet, which honestly, the only time I've ever set valet mode was one time I took it to the dealership to update the PDR. So just to see, you know, if anything crazy happened, and of course it didn't, but um, this is an option there just in case anything like that would be a problem for you. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Um, I just want to put together something real quick for you just to go over some of these things that I had heard in the comments section. So if you liked it, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up. If you have any other questions about anything C7 Corvette related that I can help you with, shoot them in the comments section down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, I'd love to have you as part of Horsepower Obsessed community. So please go ahead and subscribe. And as always, guys, I'll catch you in the next upload.